What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So today we're going to talk about money goals to achieve by the age of 30. But I took this a few steps further because I don't want you to think about just what you should do financially before the age of 30. Plus a lot of y'all that watch my channel are over 30. I know my main audience is between the ages of 18 and 35. So don't even just think about this as what money goals you should achieve by 30, but think about the money goals you should achieve in the next five, 10 years. That's long-term thinking. That's not just listening to what some floating head is telling you on a screen. It's actually thinking into the future. Five years from now, where do I want to be? And this video is not me giving out some generic advice saying that you should be making this amount of money by this age and you should have this amount in your savings account and you should buy a house. See, first of all, I'm considering the fact that a lot of us live in different areas and a lot of us are walking different walks of life right now. So I think it's bad financial advice to just say that you should have certain things by a certain age in general. Because if you live in California and I tell you you need to buy a house by the age of 30 and you're over there 23 knowing good and well the houses are upward of a million dollars, you're going to be looking at me like I'm crazy. Like I know most 30 year olds in California are living in apartments and I know most 30 year olds in New York are living in apartments. Ain't nobody trying to buy a house right now. And even where I live at, I live in Nevada and a lot of people out here are living in apartments. Because if you want to get a decent house, that's $700,000 and up. And if you want to spend $300,000, you might get yourself a shoebox with some land next to it, but that's about it. So anyway, rant over. I'm going to get into the video. So what I've done instead of giving just generic advice, I actually came up with this really clever acronym to help guide you on how to set goals for the future. And once I go over this framework, then we'll start to add the numbers of years to it. So check this out. My birthday is coming up exactly a month from me recording this video. So it's July 15th today, which means I'm a Leo. Not that I really care about Zodiac signs or any of that mess, but a lot of people are curious what my Zodiac sign is. It's a Leo. So as I was thinking of ways to help you plan financially and everything, I came up with that exact acronym, LEO, Learning, Earning, and Ownership. Let's talk about it. So the first part of any financial goal, in my humble opinion, should be learning. And this is very foundational. This is something that a lot of us really don't even think about up front, but it's a subconscious thing that we all do without really even knowing it. But we're not as intentional as we probably should be when it comes to figuring out what exactly we should learn and why exactly it is a financial goal. See, learning is what gives you knowledge. And once you apply this knowledge, it adds value. And once you add value, you're able to make money. That is how that works. And the thing about learning is you ain't going to be getting paid during the learning process nine times out of ten. It's just like once you further your education after high school, if you choose to do so, right? When you go to community college, when you go to undergrad, you are not getting paid for what you're learning. You're really just grinding right then. As a matter of fact, you are paying to learn. And there's a chance that after you finish your learning, you won't be making jack. And that's where a lot of the planning and financial goal setting ends right there. It just dies right there at the learning process because so many people give up on learning. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with changing your major or changing paths, but there's a lot wrong with being greatly ambitious to achieve a certain thing and then realizing that doesn't work out. So you just give up on everything altogether. Because if you decide you want to go to school for computer science and you're like, man, I don't really like computers like that, but I'm still good at math. I'm still good at physics. Let me go ahead and change that to engineering. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But what's wrong is if you decide, you know what, I want to be a computer science major. Then you go through with it and it doesn't work out and you're not as interested and you might have failed a few classes or it's just not clicking fast enough. You're like, man, you know what? Screw it. I'll just do nothing. I'm going to stop progressing myself completely. That is the wrong way of thinking. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what you see happening a lot. It's you don't want to become married to one individual idea that you should learn something. Because make no mistake, we are all human. And everything isn't meant for us to learn. So just remember that as I go on with this learning portion of my lovely LEO acronym. I worked hard on that. Y'all better like this video now. I'm about to get into this. When I talk about learning, I'm going to split it up into two different scenarios. Learning, one, are different things financially that we need to know as adults. And then two is the type of learning that we need to earn a specific amount of income. 
right? So when it comes to learning, I want to learn how to budget my money. I want to learn about credit cards. I want to learn how they work. I want to learn how a credit card score is even calculated. I want to learn what a FICO score is. I want to learn about interest rates and I want to learn about debt and how long it should actually take to pay it off and different methods to pay it off. You see what I'm saying? This is free game. Y'all better write this down. This is that free game I be talking about. See, so you see what I'm saying? These are actual learning goals that most adults still don't have any knowledge on. Let us continue. I want to learn how to buy a house and assess its value. I want to learn the best way to buy a car that'll be as cost effective as possible. I want to learn how to invest in the stock market. I want to learn how to save money effortlessly. I want to learn about compound interest. What is that? You get what I'm saying? Look, these are all, look, if y'all write all of these down and y'all actually individually learn about these things, I'm telling you, you're going to be on top of the world financially. I'm telling you. And then on the other end of learning is stuff like, I want to get my bachelor's degree in engineering by this date. And the, and the second part of the learning goal is stuff like this. I want to get my associate's degree in electrical engineering technology in two years. I want to get my nursing degree in four years. I want to get my master's degree in statistics in the next couple of years, assuming you've already done undergrad. That is layer one of the second portion. But this is from an educational perspective that actually gives you your full-time income in the future. Most people already know about this, right? But what they don't realize, and this is for some reason something that professors and teachers worldwide don't really talk about that much, at least none of mine did, and that's this. Education doesn't stop just because you got your cap and gown. I don't care if it's high school, community college, undergrad, graduate school. I don't care if you got your PhD. I don't care if you got your MD. It don't matter. Education doesn't stop just because you got your coat on, you know what I'm saying, and you're cap and gown. Education must exist outside of this. And that education is, okay, I'm going for a degree right now, and obviously I need to get a job, so I better learn how to interview. That is a profitable skill to learn how to do, right? Because how many of us get nervous when we realize, oh man, I have an interview to go to. I don't even know what to say. How does an interview even go? And if you don't have any professional experience, you're not going to know how an interview goes. How many of us have professions or even take classes where we have to speak in front of a large audience? Don't you think it might be necessary to learn how to better speak in front of people? I think so. Do you have a profession that is writing intensive and you have to have excellent verbal and written communication? Don't you think it would be beneficial to learn how, you know what? How do I improve upon my written communication? Because I'm good verbally, but I just have issues with the written communication. I got to send all these emails out. I have to type all these papers and paragraphs and all these things of that nature. I got to type up all these reports and I have to know what I'm talking about. Can't be no typos. Don't you think it would be good to invest in some type of learning, whether it's a course or just investing some time and really assessing how things should be written? Because if you do, that's going to make you better at whichever career you set off to get to. And before long, what you'll see is you'll be able to progress in your career path as long as you keep improving because it, the learning never stops. The learning never stops. And I'll give you an example of mine. Something that I always wanted was a mentor or a coach. And I remember, like, I thought it was impossible to find one. But back then, I had enough sense to know, hey, learning doesn't stop in the classroom. It keeps going forever. You never stop learning. And the stuff that I did, like asking the right questions and being interested in the right things and just wanting to be better is what attracted a mentor into my life. Maybe one of your goals is to have a mentor because what a lot of people don't understand about mentors is they accelerate your learning and they chop your learning curve in half because they already done figured this out. They've been through what you're going through. They've had the challenges. They've had the adversity. So when you come around trying to do something in the wrong way, they can correct you and they can tell you why it's wrong. They can help you learn by learning from their mistakes that they made in the past. I'm just saying, stuff like that is super, super powerful. But hopefully I painted the picture for you. There's two layers of this learning portion of Leo. Within the first portion, there's the money terminology and of course, how to do the skills outlined in the money terminology. And then two are the professional skills, the skills that actually bring money to you. And as you could probably imagine, like once you get your skill and everything, and once you get your degree or whatever the case is for you, 
you might decide that, you know, you don't really like your profession that much or you do like it, but you want to make some more money. So what you would add on to the education outside of that is how do I get better at interviewing? How do I move up? Or how do I start my own business or my own side hustle? You start asking yourself these questions. You start doing things that bring more money into your life. You get what I'm saying? And as you're balancing this, you have the money terminology going on at the same time. So you're already building the habits of budgeting your money and saving your money and learning how to invest in the stock market, learning how to invest in yourself, learning about credit cards and credit scores, how they're calculated. This stuff right here makes you dangerous because the average person doesn't know half of that. Oh, and I'm going to add one more thing to this money terminology. How do I set up a 401k? Because you know what? A lot of people don't know how to do that. And if you don't believe me, just ask around. Ask around at work. Hey, you got your 401k set up yet? You would be surprised at how many people say, uh, what's that? It's a fact. And that's, why no, and that's why learning is so important. That's why learning makes you so dangerous and cold. Because once you arm yourself with the education and you actually apply it, you're way ahead of the curve and you're way ahead of where you would have been if you didn't know any of this stuff. And you're a lot closer to that financial freedom goal that most of us have. Oh, one more thing. What's the cost of living? Just learning about this stuff, oh, it's going to make you ridiculous because if you come out of college knowing the, about the cost of living and how much you should realistically spend based on how much you're getting paid, you're not going to overdo it and you're not going to be living paycheck to paycheck like most people do. It's all about learning early, early on. All right, so that's learning. So now we're gonna go to E in Leo, and that is earning. And you know, whenever you think about earning, don't be afraid to go higher than your expectations. And here's why, because there's gonna be years between these goals. It's not like you're making $50,000 this year, and you're expecting to be making 200,000 next year, right? It can happen, but is it the most realistic thing? No, it's not. But maybe in the next 10 years, you're making 200,000. And I say that because a lot of us, when we make these goals, we lowball ourselves. And I think subconsciously that affects the effort we put into reaching that goal because it becomes so attainable that it actually takes you a whole five years to get there when in reality you could jump from 50 to 80 in two years or less that's just an example it obviously depends on what your profession is where you live and all these other things right but that's just an example the reason i want you to set this type of goal within your five or ten year plan or before your 30 or wherever you're at in life is simply because if you really assess and look at where the world is right now. First of all, we're in a recession. <laughs> Don't forget that. Uh, second of all, inflation is ridiculous. Inflation is super high. Let's not forget about that. And three, most of us remain stagnant throughout our entire careers with the salary. And there is definitely a cap out when it comes to salary. And I don't care how much you make. There is a cap every single time. You make $50,000 this year, you make $54,000 this year, and you just keep going up and up and up, and it might go up to 58 by year six or seven, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that is the exact case for some people, just putting it out there. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could move up, you could enter an entirely different career, you could build side income. There's a lot of different ways to do this. So when it comes to earning, what I want you to sit down and think about is, if you're not making as much as you want to be making, which is probably every single person watching this video, because I've never seen somebody who says, you know what, I make enough money, I'm good. I've heard everyone say, you know, I'm doing well, but I want to I want to do even more because you know what, success is contagious and you're going to want to keep going the further you get ahead. And that's how I am now, because like five years ago, you know what I'm saying, the salary I'm making now actually exceeds the goal that I came up with five years ago. And I'm still pushing. I still want more, not because I'm greedy, but because of the fact that I'm thinking about the future and I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking about my family, my future family, and I'm thinking about how I want to build this generational wealth. And I'm thinking about all the goals that I have in the future. Right. So think about your goals in that regard, but also think about how do you want to make this extra money? Do you want to work overtime at work? Do you want to invest? Do you want to build passive streams of income or do you want to build active streams of income? Like something like what I do, which is online coaching for personal finance. Check it out on my website if you're interested with that. I have free and paid options. But you see what I'm saying? That is an active form of income because you're exchanging your time in the form of a service for pay. 
That's an example of active income. Passive income is something like this YouTube channel or writing a book or making a movie or making a music album, stuff like that, stuff that can be played over and over and over again that can be massively consumed at the same time from multiple people and add so much value and have so much reach. These are examples of passive income because when I go to sleep, people are watching my videos. When I'm awake, people are watching my videos. And that's whether I'm getting one view an hour, 100 views an hour, whether I get 10,000 views, there's still views. You get what I'm saying? And that's gonna translate to money based off the ad revenue. So these are examples and things that you wanna think about. And what I always thought about was, you know, I just wanna be able to supplement my income with passive income. I want to be able to say, you know what, I'm making an extra $100 a month in passive income. And then once you get that, you go higher, 200, 300, 400, 1,000. You get what I'm saying, 1,500, 2,000. And I say that because when most of us set out to make passive income, we don't really understand the challenge that actually lies in front of us. We think that we can put in a ton of work, you know what I'm saying, for two years straight and all of a sudden, boom. Now we got a full-time passive income stream that pays $70,000 or more a year. Like it doesn't quite work that way because passive income is something that isn't exactly the most stable thing in the world, especially if you're not famous. So there's been months where I made $1,000 on my YouTube channel. There's been months I made $100 on my YouTube channel. You get what I'm saying? Think about rappers and singers. They don't always sell the same amount every single time they come out with an album. Sometimes their sales are disappointing to them. And sometimes they're like, yeah, Double platinum, let's go. So I want you to think about it in that way. Because, and, I, and I say that because when I was 21, the reason I came up with that mindset with the, let me supplement my income was because I fell flat on my face thinking, yeah, I'm gonna make at least $50,000 in passive income every single year because I'm going hard now. Like, <laughs> that's, that's not how it works. Again, it can happen. It's just not a realistic way of thinking and it's definitely not a realistic expectation to have. This stuff takes years. It takes years of the first step of what I just went over in Leo, which is learning. It takes years of learning and applying that knowledge and getting better every single day. So in the earning phase, it's good to set a goal of how much you want to be earning within the next five years or 10 years or by the age of 30. It's good to have a set goal of how much money you'd like to have in your emergency fund by that age. It's good to say that I want to be debt free by this time. And it's good to say, this is how much passive income I would like to earn, and this is how much I would like to earn in extra active income. And by extra active, I mean, in addition to my job, I'd like to have a side business where I'm doing one-on-one -on -one consulting, or I'm mowing lines, or I'm painting houses, something. You know what I'm saying? That could be another example of active income. But it's a really, really good mental exercise to actually think about how much you'd like to be earning, what you'd like to be doing as you earn that money. And again, you never want to marry anything because something could always happen. Like I told you all in a few videos ago, when I was like 22 years old, I was married to the idea that I should be in an MLM and stay in it. And that was what was going to get me rich. And I quickly understood that, that that like totally wasn't the case. You know what I'm saying? That business model did not work for me and it definitely didn't work for COVID. Let me tell you all that. I'm going to just say this. It's hard to build a business that relies on human interaction and social contact when a pandemic hits. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. The whole world shut down and now I can't do nothing. And no one has any money to give to invest in my business anyway. So that was how I came to the conclusion. You should not marry anything. Again, like if you have a YouTube channel, you shouldn't marry the idea that that's going to be the one thing that gets you to where you want to be financially. Because why? Google can say no more YouTube. They're probably not, but I'm just saying they could if they wanted to. But instead, I thought of this, and this goes hand in hand with number two, and that's earning. I thought about this. Okay, well, what if I build a network through YouTube and channel that network through Instagram and through a website? Not just any website, my website, the website that no one can take down because I own this domain. I own this web address. And that's the mindset that it took me years to get. I could have watched a YouTube video and somebody could have told me that, but I wouldn't have appreciated or understood it to the level I do now if I didn't go through it myself. So I'm just telling y'all, that's a good rule of thumb when you're thinking about, you know what I'm saying, the earning portion of Leo, because the earning portion, your earning goals are gonna be your earning goals because you know how much money you wanna be making because you know what you'll be able to do with that. But I want, I'll challenge you to think a little further than that and see if you can set a goal and then put a little more on top of it and that is what you should strive for because then you're going to go even harder throughout that time 
And I guarantee you could even exceed what that goal is. I don't know what I was doing with this, but y'all understood it. But here's the part that I just said that actually happens to be the third phase of Leo. And that is O, which stands for ownership. And this is boss category right here. Look, I'm telling you right now, this is when you're actually really doing something. Because you've applied the first two parts of Leo so effectively that now you are entering the ownership category. And that's deciding for yourself, am I going to own a house by the age of 30 or in the next 5 to 10 years? If so, how many acres of land is that house going to be on? How many square feet is that house going to be? What am I going to do with this house? Am I going to rent it out? You want to think like this. This is next level thinking right here. Instead of just keeping it simple like, I want to buy a house. Okay, well, that doesn't have a lot of depth to it. What does the house look like? Is it one story or two story? Does it have a loft? Does it have grass around it? You know what I'm saying? Or does it have red dirt around it? Is it a brand new house? Is it a house that was previously lived in? Like, what are we talking about here? Does it have land on it? If so, what do you plan on doing with that land? You can decide for yourself, you know what I'm saying, if you want to own gold. And if so, how many ounces of gold do I want to own by this time? And now we're about to jump into my favorite part of this. I want to own businesses. Well, how many businesses do you want to own? I only want to own the best, so it ain't going to be that many. It's going to probably be five max, okay? And one of them is Apple. So I want to own a thousand shares of Apple by this time. And then you think about how many shares you own now. It might be zero, it might be 50, it might be 100. But either way, you look at where you're at now and you look at what you want then. And now you're already subconsciously formulating the plan on how you're going to get there. And even if you don't get there by that time, because you're thinking about it now, you're going to get so much closer to that goal than you would have if you didn't even do any of this. And this goes hand in hand with your earning goal because part of your passive income strategy could be from investments, because all investments are, are basically really smart ways of building passive income. Because these businesses are going to just keep working forever, probably beyond your and my lifetime, especially like Apple and Microsoft and Google, stuff like that, right? So they're going to just keep going. And so that means they're going to keep paying you forever. And by forever, I mean generations, lifetimes. And they'll just keep paying you on and on and on for generations upon generations. You might want to own your own business. Okay, well, what does that entail? Well, it requires that I own a domain, so I own a website that I can then have my services on. That means I need to build a network and own an email list so I can keep letting the people who've subscribed to this email list know what products I have coming out next. See, most people want to make six figures for no reason, just to say they make six figures. Most people want to make a million dollars a year just to say they make a million dollars a year or that I'm a millionaire, assuming they actually have a million dollars in their net worth. But anyway, they say these things, but what is the plan? And that's what Leo was all about. What's your plan? We're not just saying this stuff just to sound good. I want to make a million dollars because I want to make a difference in this world. And this is what I have planned out to do with this a million dollars. And this right here is the real boss level tip right here. I want to own my time, which means nobody in the world monopolized my time except for me. So you might be so you might be the person that's like, you know what? I like my career, but in the next 10 years, ain't going to be no, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no, going to be nobody telling me when I'm going to wake up, when I'm going to get there or when to leave or when to go to lunch. I want to own my time. That means I wake up when I want to wake up. I go to the gym when I want to go to the gym. That's called being financially free, where you're not relying on any one stream of income. Because you're, that's how much money you got right now. You have effectively bought your time back, so now you own your time. And ways you can get there is by doing stuff like owning. See, I'm telling you, it's a strong word. You might want to own your own book. And by that, I mean write a book and actually own the rights to it, which you will. But that's why you got to buy your own ISBN so you can sell the book anywhere, including on your website. Because if you just use what Amazon has, then that means you can only sell it on their website. You ain't about to you ain't write one chapter in this book. You ain't going to tell me where I can sell my book. You get what I'm saying? I say that because I just wrote a book and um, I bought several ISBNs because ain't nobody going to tell me where I can sell my book. And I definitely plan on writing books in the future, which is why I bought multiple ISBNs. If y'all know what ISBNs are, the little numbers that are on the back of the book, just above the barcode. Anyway, I'm trying to make a point here, cracking myself up. But uh, my point is, 
you want to focus on ownership. I own the rights. I own the assets. I own the investments. I own the house. I own my own products. These are the types of things within this category that I'm talking about. So these are the types of goals encapsulated in a three letter acronym, LEO, learning, earning, ownership. You focus on those three things and now you just attach the time to it. It could be different times for different portions of the LEO. It could be the same times for all the portions of the LEO. It really doesn't matter. The bottom line is you add times to these and you add specificity. I hope I said that right to each of your goals and that will make you dangerous, just like a Leo. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.